It's Friday, March 3rd. Let's talk PlayStation. Right away, I'd just like to acknowledge something that doesn't happen too frequently. There's usually a big gap of time in between when these events sort of take place. Uh, but it's kind of a big deal. Today's a console launch. Uh, Nintendo Switch officially comes out today, which is awesome. Uh, I really, really, really want one. I told myself I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. I'll wait until that, you know, the, the system matures a little bit. But I, just, I love games too much, man. I, I see a new, like, a console launch just gets me, like, excited. And I'm trying so hard to not, like not jump in too early but man i, I seriously kind of want one now even though it it's still has very glaring issues with it um but yes switches out let me know if you guys got one um but we're still going to be talking some playstation stuff so let's get into that right away well actually the, let's let's backtrack a little bit to a gamestop news story that we had if you remember a while ago what was it maybe two weeks ago i don't even remember anymore but there was that news story that broke out from Kotaku about um, the Circle of Life program and how it was sort of really pressuring employees to hit specific numbers for pre-owned and pre-orders and things of that nature. So now it uh, looks like all that publicity has uh, definitely um, done something to GameStop Corporate because now the, the sources are saying that GameStop Corporate has sort of changed that policy. So now instead of um, ranking individual employees at their store based on you know their performance of, of sales and whatnot now they're actually going to be ranked as just one store so individual employees are not singled out therefore no pressure on them to keep their jobs and lie to customers presumably um, that was kind of a big deal for you know when that news story sort of broke out is that some employees would go uh, you know take take greater lengths to the point of lying to customers just so they can get better you know, used numbers and things like that um, and also they're adding a fifth sort of element to their their store and what they're sort of tracking because you know it was uh, used game sales pre-orders um, I don't even fucking remember the other two but uh, the fifth one is new game sales oh it was the rewards card and then trade-ins. Um, so yeah, the fifth one is uh, new game sales, which so now it's, it's not hurting employees when they sell a new game because now they're actually you know looking for those and tracking those numbers. But that's actually great news um, that something actually was done and hopefully they improve the in-store experience even more because I just recently tweeted how I'm so annoyed when I go there and I get barraged for not having a pre-order if I go to pick up a new game. So they still got a long way ahead of them, I feel. I, I always think their in-store experience is pretty awful. For this next one, we absolutely have to talk about this. It's very interesting. I know it's Xbox related, but it's always got that PlayStation influence to it. This past week, Microsoft announced a new little service called Xbox Game Pass. This is going to be a $10 monthly service where it gives Xbox One users a you know, catalog of about 100 games, whether it's Xbox One or Xbox 360, catalog of 100 games. They're not streamed. These are download games. So you actually download the full title to your, you know, your Xbox One and you're able to play it. You can even play it offline. Um, the actual native game is saved to the system and you have access to all 100 of those games. Now, it's also not necessarily in, the same, in sort of the same lines of a streaming service like Netflix or PlayStation Now. This is the obvious one it's kind of being compared to. Um, the games are going to be rotated quite frequently. I guess every month, um, I don't know if it's all 100 games or if it's, you know, a certain pool of 20 games will get swapped out and then go in and then, you know, another 20 games that are like at a certain age of being on the catalog, maybe those get swapped out. But um, what they're saying is that these games will be in sort of a rotation, kind of more akin to PlayStation Plus, if you kind of see what I'm saying. But it's it, this is more like sort of EA Access, which is available on Xbox One and not on PlayStation 4, where you pay you know EA a certain fee a month. I forget what it is. I think it's actually it's like five or ten, but. You know, you, you pay a certain amount a month and you have um, access to a bunch of EA games and they are not streamed. You are downloading the games and you're, you're playing them natively, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's good. I think um, it's really working out for EA. I think uh, Microsoft kind of looked at that model and wanted to sort of follow that. And that's that's what the, the discussion turns into. Obviously, you're, you're going to look at this. Now you're going to look at PlayStation Now and you're going to draw sort of comparisons there. And... Realistically, when you look at it, they're kind of too different because PlayStation Now has got like upwards of 400 plus games and it's streaming only and it's got a kind of a higher price tag to it too in terms of monthly fee, whereas Microsoft's doing a situation where it's about 100 games, it's going to be constantly you know, rotated, so that's not necessarily a um, consistent catalog and um, you know, you're downloading the games uh, specifically. Now, we keep talking about PlayStation Now. Of course, it's got the negative criticism. Of course, a lot of people don't like it. You guys know my take on it, which is that I just think the service is too far ahead of its time. Uh, it certainly makes a lot of sense. 
I think uh, another thing I always mention about PlayStation Now, which I guess a lot of people never seem to realize, that um, one of the big features of a streaming service is that immediacy. You don't have to download your games. If you want to play a game, you just start it and it's going to start right away. Whereas if you look at something like EA Access or Xbox Game Pass, you do still have to download the actual full games once you get access to it. Um, but I understand it, you know, streaming is not something that is totally ideal and realistic for a lot of people and it's not desirable and that's fine. That's why I think PlayStation Now is ahead of its time. I think it has a place in the future. It's just, I think Sony's just kind of putting their eggs into a basket and getting it, getting it ready, you know, um, and they typically do that a lot, you know, like with PSP Go. I think that was the example we used back when we talked, when we just talked about PlayStation Now. Um, and they've done another, uh, a number of other times. Like I think PlayStation Home was kind of too far ahead of its time. Um, but I think it's a good thing for Microsoft. It makes a lot of sense for them. And they know that's going to be a, you know, a crowd-pleasing thing because people want to download their games. They, if, they, if there's going to be a $10 monthly service, people are going to want to download the actual game. They don't want to stream it. So that's a good move for Microsoft. And the thing is, it's, this isn't going to influence Sony whatsoever. Sony's not going to follow suit. They are not going to have the same sort of idea and do this. They are sticking to PlayStation Now. That is their service. They're going to keep pushing it. And... You know, until I, they're going to keep pushing it, I guess, until it starts being relevant. And who knows how long that's going to take. I think it's still kind of really in its adolescence. Now let's move on to PlayStation VR, uh, specifically that little um, accessory that we heard about a long time ago, the PlayStation VR aim controller, uh, which is supposed to be, you know, best suited for Farpoint, but it's going to be su supported on a number of other games. Uh, well, we know when that's coming out, and that's launching day and date with the actual game Farpoint, which is May 16th, which is pretty cool. Now, you know... I think when we first sort of looked at this, we thought, okay, another one of those sort of ridiculous things. I mean, they had this uh, on PlayStation 3. I don't remember the name of the peripheral, but, you know, they demoed it a lot with, like, Killzone 3 and stuff, and you could use it for, like, uh, what, Bioshock Infinite? I guess that wouldn't really work with Bioshock Infinite, but, um, you know, you could use it with games that supported PlayStation Move as a first-person shooter and stuff, so I think we all kind of looked at this PlayStation VR one and just thought, oh, this is, like, the same fucking thing, basically. Although I will say... You, I, this is probably a lot better. Let me tell you why. Because the the best PlayStation VR experience is the two move controllers. The best any sort of VR experience, even on um, Oculus with the touch controllers, the best experience is having two of those motion controllers to simulate, you know, two handed stuff going on. Those games feel way more immersive because it actually works. You're actually in that universe firsthand, experiencing it. So I think it's going to be drastically different this time because you're going to be actually there and it's going to feel way more natural to be in a virtual space and pretending to hold the gun because you're, you're going to look down it's going to look like a gun you know what i'm saying it's not going to you're not going to see the the pla cheap little pl plastic peripheral that you bought um it's going to feel pretty dope uh same thing with if you were to play drive club vr and you're using a racing wheel and a good racing wheel mind you that actually has you know the full degree turn of a, an actual you know car it's gonna feel awesome so i think it's something that you sh if you're into playstation vr or if you're looking into it uh if it's something you're planning on buying down the road this would definitely take the experience i think to another level um and we'll find out may 16th which segues nicely into our last news story. Uh, it's nice if you want PlayStation VR, but you still can't find one. And apparently the numbers are looking pretty good for Sony. We actually have official numbers. So uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Andrew House finally disclosed this. They're at 915,000 PlayStation VR headsets sold. That puts them pretty much the market leader of premium virtual reality headsets. Uh, Andrew House feels that uh, moving forward with the amount of titles that are being developed and the amount of developer support that is currently being had for PlayStation VR, they feel that they're going to hold that leadership. I think that's pretty obvious because most people have PlayStation 4s. It's the most affordable way to get into the, um, you know, the sort of the uh, the premium VR space and. Not, so we always talked about like what sounds like a good a good number like before PlayStation VR came out that we had that conversation a lot you know what would Sony be happy with what sort of realistic and stuff and so that's what that's what Andrew's saying right now in terms of why it's so hard to find one and why they have the number that they have right now and why supplies in the situation that it's in um, he kind of described it as you've got certain people within the company that are really happy about it and are really excited for PlayStation VR. And then you've got other people in the company whose job it is to temper the expectations of those people that worked on VR, you know, so you kind of have to set realistic goals and manufacture a certain number of what you think. And apparently the demand was just higher than they thought. Um, I don't know why they're kicking their asses into high gear now that the demand is there, but 
apparently this is a legitimate situation where they are doing much better than they expected so which is good um you know you've got 54 what 54 million probably a little bit more now uh playstation 4 is out there uh, and you're close to about a million playstation vrs you've got a lot of games in development it's looking good uh i think you know <laughs> playstation vr came out it's gotten a few titles creepily you know coming along on the playstation store but you you don't really see much discussion now it just kind of came out and now there's nothing which we all really kind of knew that was going to happen um resident evil 7 was the sort of the, the biggest thing that just recently kind of dropped and that's getting a lot of discussion a lot of people are really enjoying it because it is a full-fledged game that works on vr and that's great that's that creates that sort of optimism for what it can do in the long term and now it's just a matter of Sony getting more units out there so more developers can see what, you know, Capcom did with Resident Evil. And they can see how many PlayStation VR units are out there in that landscape. And they can see that, because you'd have to assume, right now PlayStation VR is kind of a hardcore device if you have it. Um, more than likely, if you own a PlayStation VR, the attach rate's probably pretty high. You're probably buying a lot of VR games because you want to use your headset. And that's always something very lucrative for a lot, uh, lucrative for a lot of developers. Uh, you know, the Vita is an example where there's not many Vitas, Vitas out there, but Vita owners love to buy games. So you can release a game on that platform and do pretty well for yourself, even though there's not that many Vitas out there. You know, if you were to release just a basic PlayStation 4 game, you've got 54 million people that you could possibly win over. But, you know, there's so many other games and competition and, and only so much money to go around for from that, you know, consumer base. You know, so it's kind of a good situation for, for VR right now, I think. I think just Sony needs to start manufacturing more of them and um, keep the momentum going because so far it's looking good. Those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you and that beautiful person right over there. Um, now, let me tell you guys something. I'm working on this thing. It's going to take me a very long time. But I guarantee you, you guys are really going to like it. And that's all I'm going to say. It's one of the, you know, it's a situation where you can't like, you know how like you, you, you decide on New Year's or something, you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to diet this year. And then you start telling everybody. And the moment you start telling everybody that you're going to do something is when you don't do it. Just keep it to yourself. You know, st stay motivated. Keep doing what you do. You know what I'm saying? Do you. And then shit actually gets done. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to tease you a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to tickle you. And if you are looking at this motion, you know damn well what I'm kind of doing right there. And you might feel a little uncomfortable at this point. That's fine. But I'm just letting you know. Trust me, new videos are coming. I say I've been saying it for the past like fucking four months probably. But at some point it'll happen and you'll be like, damn. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me. And I'll see you guys next Friday.